We'll start this morning with uh, the Irish Independent. Uh, park refusal, uh, a terrible move, uh, is the back page here, David, and it's a story that's rumbling on now for the last 24 hours or so. Uh, venue rules can't be changed until 2020, despite outcry over Miller charity match. So it's the Liam Miller uh, charity game that's set for Parky Cueve. Uh, it can't be played at Parky Cueve, or that it's set for Turner's Cross. It can't be played at Parky Cueve due to the rules that don't allow uh, a Gaelic Games ground to be utilised for uh, a foreign sport, so to speak. It can't be used for this charity match. And uh, this article here by Colin Keyes in the back page of the Irish Independent this morning uh, cites Noel Walsh, who talks about uh, bringing the motion to Congress in 2016, which would have allowed the Lee Miller match to be played uh, over the next couple of weeks in Parky Cueve. And uh, the request of use of other county grounds like Croke Park to be determined by Central Council for other sports got just 23%. And uh, it, it was, it, it's Noel Walsh quoted here just to kind of say that the terrible decision, uh, as he puts it, is down to this, as this of this rejection in, in Croke Park and at Congress and that we will not be able to see another vote until 2020. What's your take on it, David? It's, um, look at no matter what sport or context you come from an Irish, in, in Ireland, uh, from an Irish perspective, the Liam Miller story is very sad. And what I think the emotive part of it is that there's nobody that's really saying this is right. Um, it shouldn't be allowed. But I do have to say, if there's rules, there was opportunities in the past, and as you said back in 2016, to mitigate against certain situations like this to say let's 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 open uh, up on a on a on a, on a, uh, a single basis you know everything is uh, approached differently but for an, a Canadian like this uh, benevolent fund for Liam Miller it's it's probably it's disappointing from an Irish context whether it's, it's rugby soccer GA or you're not involved in sport um, that it's not but I, I have to say I do see the rules are rules, um, stipulations are stipulations, and Congress needs to overturn this decision. Um, there's no Congress coming up, um, unfortunately, in the next few weeks. Um, would it be the best decision for Crow Park to say, we got, you know, not that we got it wrong, and it's not the Newbridge scenario again, but again, it's all emotional. And again, the PR is not positive towards Crow Park, and it's just another it's just another bite out of the out of the um, institution that it is, and it's 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 unfortunate. But the rules are the rules, and it's hard to just say we just go day by day and change what's stipulated in Congress, what's stipulated in the GAA rule book, and. Well, just just on that, like I mean, Keys kind of cites the actual rule here, and I do wonder if there's going to be a loophole here because Rule Five Point One A that prohibits the use of property for any games other than those controlled by the association, which of course kind of suggests that the foreign sports are not in conflict with the aims and objects of the association. So I don't see how this would be in conflict with the aims and objects of the association. In fact, I would have thought that the GEA hosting a Liam Miller charity match for the good of the community in Cork would be what, right within the remit of the GEA. This is exactly the values that the GEA was founded upon, about supporting the community, about being the spine of the community. The Liam Miller charity match is a key part of the Cork community and only uh, a little over 7,000 people will get to view it. Tickets are on sale this morning. You suspect it is going to sell out and turn his cross. That's your, not, not a loophole, that's the reason why this thing should be hosted in Parky Cueve. And you're right, it's a potential PR disaster for the GEA, but you'd like to think that they're not thinking about the PR element of it, they're thinking about doing the right thing. Yeah, and it, look, we'd all want, and, and the guys in Crow Park would like to do the right thing. And I know they're probably saying it wouldn't be great to have, but at the end of the day, you have a rule book, and the rule book is stipulated and changed from Congress to Congress. And if they just, I don't think anyone in the, you know, because there's a lot of rules that like, people would like to change like overnight, but they can't. And um, unfortunately, this is this is one of them. Now, if you, I don't know when was the when's the rugby world cup? Twenty twenty three. So that was going to be changed the next. Yeah, that was years. voted. So that's actually interesting. It's interesting that you mentioned that because uh, Colin Keys mentions it here as well. The twenty thirteen motion at that congress was carried by ninety three percent to permit the twenty twenty three rugby world cup to be played in GA grounds. Now, granted, it's different because it was on a temporary basis, but like only 23% voting for uh, Rule 42 to be carried essentially in other grounds is a very small turnout. It's a very small yes vote for that. Like, why is that, do you think? Is it just kind of controlled? There's, there's some paranoia going on? Um, again, I, and let's be straight, it's probably the soccer versus the rugby aspect. Um, 
the 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 history and tradition of soccer emanates from a from a from a, a close neighbour in England who was who was um, the enemy at, uh, for a long stage and it's not that's not the way it is now but it's there's still a certain um, it still resonates to a lot of people where rugby is seen as just a diverse worldwide it's still uh, soccer I think is unfortunately um, seen as as um, uh, a memory of the past, and that's I think that's the difference. And again, people are told, mm. people are told this is this is good, this is what we want, and it's that's it's, a pretty archaic view, isn't it, to say the that's, the soccer is well, that's the, that's the you enemy. know that's again that's it's it has it resonates from from the past, and that's was if it was rugby, um, now with this situation, it 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 wouldn't be overturned. But I do think the Gaelic people have a lot more openness to rugby than the would than the would soccer, which is. Like, the, the irony, obviously, behind like you're, and wouldn't be overly surprised if what you're saying is actually in the minds of a lot of the people voting at Congress. But it, you just think the irony of it, like Englishman Ed Sheeran sells out Parky Cueve, uh, Irish uh, delegates will not allow English sport to be played at Parky Cueve. It's yeah, yeah, and the the, the Bruce Springsteen's in this world and everything else. It's it, it, like, you know what? It, forget about it, it. Will be good for a family in a small in in a, in a local community. To benefit from something that's that's there already, and again, the the Miller family from Parky Cueve, we're grateful for Parky Cueve as well, because it won't be full for another two years. Yeah. It's only the hundreds that's going to fill it. Um, I don't know what was the lead in, what was the negotiations with it. You know, it seems to be now the tickets are gone on sale. I think we've only kind of heard this in the last <coughs> three or four days. Um, you know, was the right people approached? Probably what, and I think Cork County Board were open to it, but the rule book. Um, stipulates that it needs to be Congress, and a at the end of the day, the rule book is the rule book, and emotions sometimes um, can't outweigh a, ru uh, a rule book. Unfortunately, now look, it's not Crow Park is open. You're not going to you're not going to have it in Crow Park, but could you have something like that? In because Crow, Crow Park is open to yeah. an opportunity like this. Like the thing is, uh, like our colleague Darren Cleary outside made a very valid point before coming on air that. Who's going to punish? Like, what, what's the punishment here if the GAA break their own rules and goes ahead with this? Like, what's the consequence here? I'd imagine. Like, no, I'd imagine there's not, not going to be any. There isn't, consequence. but you're, you're setting a precedent. Setting a precedent. You're setting a precedent, and yet I know, and you take take all the emotion out, but you, you, you're setting a precedent. That's whatever is in the rule book, is. The emotion is quite important in this case. Pardon? The emotion is quite important in this it's, case. It's it's everything about it because put yourself in the situation, or oh, put me in the situation. You're going. It could happen to any of us, and it's people trying to do a good yeah. cause for a good family um, in, a, in a in a good in a good part of the country, which is a sport in context. Cork is, you know, and you'd like to think that the GEA would actually feed into that a little bit and help them out, and, and actually, you know what, make one little loophole of you can't. The, unfortunately, what's in the rule book is in the rule book, and you just can't change and turn page and tear out a page from a day to day basis. In a lot of organisations, never mind just the GEA, but the way the GEA is structured is, it is probably, two th you know, the, 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 the gap between Congress and possibility of changing rules is, is um, it's, it's immense and it's, it's, it's unfortunate. And um, there's no one in the country that's saying it should be anywhere else but Parky Cueve. Like, it's... it's um, I think, I, like, I, I get the sense that you're, you're bringing a sense of realism to it. It's like, you're, you think it's not going to be changed, but it should be changed. Oh, yeah, and it's, it's, look at it, it's, it's... See, the, 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 the whole Newbridge or Nowhere thing was the emotive, you know, the wave of emotion. It was going, this is, we deserve this. And we, yes, um, on this context, without a doubt. Lee, uh, Lee Miller played for, I think it was Air Oak in Cork. He was, he, you know, he was a member of the GA um, in his youth as well. Um, but it's the emotive part of it that emotion will get you nowhere in the reality of of of, of rules, context, and um, what's what's written in the in the in the legislation. That's it's only Congress that can can overturn that. Mm. Yeah, just to reiterate as well that they do say uh, that it prohibits the use of property for any games other than those not in conflict with the aims and objects of the association. So hopefully, I know you mentioned the rule book, but hopefully someone might realise that this is not in conflict with the aims and objectives of the Gaelic Athletic Association. Uh, the front page of the Irish Examiner sports section this morning is man with a plan. Risky approach pays as McElroy makes. Impressive start to open challenge. Were you watching any of this yesterday, David? Mm. I was, I was. Probably more interest with his shoes than anything else. <laughs> um, yeah, nasty was written nasty. on the bottom of yeah. the, the shoes in case you didn't see it. 
And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's again, he's he's not going the cautious route. Um, has he been nasty? Or has he been, um, you know, has he gone... It's, it, again, he's reiterated this morning, he's totally aggressive. Is that, is he is that put in practice? Is he's he on just now? on the green there. He's yeah. on the dance floor in two, I think. Yeah, I think that's yeah. a birdie put. Um, and again, he's probably he probably needs a change of mindset as well. Um, he just kind of needs to be... You know, I think in in the last few in the last few competitions, he just he just hasn't had that spark about him, and maybe he's psychologically changed. I know, I know, a lot of athletes um, try and say you'd see a lot of rugby players with things written on their wrist. I think it was um, one of the tennis players um, in Wimbledon had dad written on the side of her shoe, and for every every time she'd go up for a serve, she'd always touch the side of her. And it was a memory of her dad who had passed away, and it, it just, she said it was the first picture that was ever taken with the, that someone actually spotted she had written in Byro Dad. Mm. But um, he's, he's, set in, he's set in a mindset and in a frame of mind that's gone right. That's, I presume you didn't have anything written on your shoes when you were playing? Um, no, no. Sometimes I had to get me out here <laughs> <laughs> written, written on, uh, on the, soles of my, uh, the soles of my shoes. But uh, no, no. We had, um, I think, um, ice was the. Was the most lances out there, and this, that's about twenty-five years ago. Ice is an ice in the veins, sort of thing. Uh, intensity, concentration, and effort. Right. Okay. Yeah. That was what you were thinking. Well, that's what we were supposed to be thinking. <laughs> <laughs> didn't know. <laughs> didn't know. Uh, sometimes we melted before uh, <laughs> we could see what was uh, what was really supposed to happen. And who uh, who was responsible for the ice uh, antonym or whatever? Uh, I, and you know what? We had this just a bit. We had this kind of um, there were black little. Um, Singlets, um, something like Rapsi Nesbitt, where they're like, um, I can't even, I, I can't say the word on radio, what you'd normally call them, but um, yeah, John Mahon had it. Um, and I was going, Ice, you could, we'd be going out doing a warrant. Ice, Ice, that's like 20, that's back in 96, 97. That's, but it's, 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 that's what you have, your little yeah. acronyms, little um, injectors, they call them now, are um, sparks that you, if you're in a, you know, massive, amount of the rugby players have them. Um, on the wrist, on the tape. Yeah, and it's initials or it's something that mean, or if, if, it's, if it's one part of their game. But yeah, it just brings you back into your zone. Mm. Um, or out of it for um, some of it. Yeah, it's a, 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 some people are saying that uh, the nasty reference was in reference to Butch Harmon. But uh, of course, Carnoustie is often known as Carnasty when things get particularly bad. So I thought it was kind of an, an ode to the golf course. It's one hell of a kind of a, a foreseeing of the situation if he's already ordered a pair of shoes that say nasty on the back or got them specially made for the sake of having a go back at Butch Harmon. Uh, so it's interesting. There is that picture as well on the front page of the Sports Friday section in the Irish Times. There is a uh, Rory shoe showing there as well. Aggressive game plan puts McElroy firmly in the mix. Uh, Dundalay surgery then on his hand post opening 71 at Carnoustie. It was a good old day for, for Dunn as well there yesterday, Paul Dunn. Um, it's just, uh, he's on the green at the moment, uh, Rory McIlroy. We'll bring you up to speed on what happens once he gets the putter out there. That is the Irish Times this morning. Uh, we'll show you the Irish news now, actually. There's uh, an interesting story here. Tyrone put the squeeze on Dublin. This is Cairo Kane's story here. Um, of course, you can see McGeary comes in to the side for McCarran. That's their one change to the game from last weekend. But the headline there, Tyrone are uh, going to... Uh, close the dimensions on the pitch. They're going to make the sidelines closer together. It's very much because of what happened in Crow Park last year, David, and it's a shrewd old move by Mickey Hart here. Mm. Yeah, well, I suppose there's a there's a rule book again that says that every pitch has to be certain dimensions. But by even saying it there now, or by being put out there, automatically that's going to create the impression. Even for the Dublin players, they're going to listen to it. They're going to hear it. That is. It's going to bring it in a little bit, a little bit closer, in terms of. And for me, it's not about the size of the pitch. It's not about the length of the pitch. There's going to be a physicality there, um, and I think it's 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 important that Tyrone get that physicality because, I, I, I honestly, last for for last year's semi final, I can't remember um, a team being unable to put in a tackle for as long as Tyrone. It was incredible. It was, you know what, it was incredible at the time, but you didn't get, it wasn't something you were constantly looking, but it was to look back on, and you're going, oh my, did nobody put an absolute hand on any Dublin player, I think it was up in the 20, first, 22nd minute, and Cullum Cavanagh got the first actual tackle in. So for, for Tyrone, and again, it's a whole new dimension, it's a, it's a championship game down in Oma, Dublin travelling, 
they're out of their comfort zone. Now, they haven't looked very uncomfortable anywhere in this world in the last five years. Mm. But it's a whole, it's a whole new world, and um, it's, it's, I, I, can't, I can't wait for it. Now, it's going to be very important the way that Tyrone, not set up, it's, it's, they have got to entice Dublin into a physicality. And look at, I'm, I'm being straight, I cannot see, I cannot see 15 players from each side um, staying on the pitch. That's the truth. I, I, I cannot. Another battle of Oma. It, it, you know what? And that's what, you, that's what you'd want. Because you, you, um, if you can't bring, and this is the reality, if you can't, and not, not a lot of teams have been even able to bring them down to, the, to another level. If you can't get to Dublin's level, sometimes you have to bring them down, not to your own, but to a different level. Um, and again, the, the whole setup from Mickey Hart's perspective, he's got to entice them. Into yeah. a battle. Yeah, no question. We will preview that in a little bit more depth uh, in about 10 15 minutes' time. Let's go to Carnoussi, though, for the time being. Neil Tracy is standing by. Neil, Rory's just walking off the first green. What happened? Uh, it's a par own. He was in perfect position for a birdie, actually. He took the driver out of the bag again on the first tee, like he did yesterday. Yesterday, he put it in the bunker, but today he left it just a little bit short of that bunker. It was absolutely perfect drive, 77 yards from the hole, and he laid up. He left himself a little bit too much with the birdie putt, probably about 12 or 15 feet, and uh, that birdie putt just missed, but he has gone to the second now with a par. So he is still two under par. That's three shots back from the leader, Kevin Kisner. Now, the only mover so far today has been uh, Ryan Moore, who has birdied the third hole to get up to four under, joining Xander Lombard, Eric Van Royen, and Tony Finau on that mark. The other people in contention, really, the big names, you've Justin Thomas and John Ram, both two under. You have uh, on one under par, you've Ricky Fowler as well, and uh, also, also Henrik Stenson of the Irish. Podrick Harrington goes off from five over shortly in just uh, just before 10 o'clock, I should say. He uh, had a double bogey, went into the Barry Burn on 18 yesterday. So disappointing end to that round for him. But uh, he'll need to do, uh, he'll need to get a, a number in the 60s today, I would imagine, because the cut mark at the moment is probably about one under. Also in contention there, Paul Dunn is level par. He tees off just after half 12. And then at a, about uh, just after that, Shane Lowry goes off from three over. He'll also need a decent round. But as I say, no early movers yet, aside from Ryan Moore, who's gone to four under. Rory McIlroy, two under, playing the second now. What are the conditions like there this morning, Neil? It's actually got a little damp now this morning, Owen. The rain arrived there overnight, but it, it is expected to clear up. There isn't much wind, though. That's the only thing. So if players can kind of, you know, get over a little bit of drizzle on their round, it's not even raining too heavily. They could get a nice score in early because the, the greens are in, are in absolutely great, Nick. Neil, thanks for that. We'll chat to you at 9 o'clock again there. Uh, Neil Tracy live from Carnoustie uh, mm -hmm. for offtheball.com. Uh, let's have a look at the back page of the Racing Post this morning. Tiger stays in the hunt is the headline. Woods five off the pace, but McElroy is favourite. Interesting movement in the market. It's not exactly a high octane uh, top of the leaderboard, but just lurking below them on two under par after that after that open par there uh, this morning is Rory McElroy lurking on two under. Uh, the back page of the Irish Daily Mail this morning is raging Rory. McElroy hits out at Sky Analyst. I'm no robot. And uh, Comer determined to emulate Galway hurlers, which, of course, uh, David says it all. You don't need to read that story to know what he's talking about. No. Sam Maguire double. crossing the Shannon. The double-double, yeah. Um, you know what? It's, it's after, after last weekend and breaking the hood over what was beating Curry in a championship, in a championship game, is um, they're going into this weekend um, in, a good, in a good frame of mind. And positivity will get you everywhere, and that's, that's a positive statement. Absolutely it is. Uh, we'll preview that game as well in a few minutes' time. Just to round up the rest of the back pages this morning, the mirror leads with pain in the neck. That's in relation to the little uh, strips you could see high up on the back of Tiger Woods yesterday. He says it wasn't anything to be worried about. It was just the strapping that was actually visible yesterday. The back page of the Herald then, of course, leads with the big game in Oma this weekend. Jim's big call. Gavin must decide to stick or twist for Tyrone showdown. The team will probably be named tonight or maybe tomorrow morning. John Small, one of those people that are back for the dubs of the weekend. Uh, this is actually an interesting one, David. Uh, the Irish Daily Star leads with gagged. Uh, new RTE sport chief in warning to his pundits. This is Declan McBennett, who was interviewed in Gaelic Life, and uh, Kieran Cunningham uh, just carries the quotes this morning. He says that uh, elements of RTE's punditry, such as Pat Spillane calling Tyrone side of play, puke, fo puke football, Joe Brawley saying you can forget about John Cavan as a man. Uh, McBennett says there's an onus on RTE to be critical, but to be conscious of what is being played out in front of you. The message that has gone out to all the analysts is that there are no personalised attacks allowed. What do you make of that? Man says I, I admire his uh, approach, and but I admire his um, 
balls when it does happen to say, right, that, that's not allowed and that's not going to be happening anymore because you're not going to be on the panel. And will them boys, um, will them boys sit in their hands and, and keep their tongues in their mouth without having personal attacks? On the, the opposite, I'd say. The opposite. So look at he's um, he's he's fair play to him because at the end of the day, um, you want to know what's happening on the pitch. You don't know what's you want. You don't want the, these opinions and personalised attacks and rants and raves from from um, from guys that's 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 well, they're, they're, they're professionals at this stage. But um, yeah, I I, I um, applaud his um, indication that it won't be tolerated. But it'll be only in the proof that that'll. Uh, the outcome will come from. Absolutely. Uh, let's show you the back page of the UK Daily Mail this morning. It goes Raging Rory, uh, it's the same as the Irish one, and uh, Japan's shock move to land Wenger as boss. This, that's an interesting one. That's Steve Stammers, uh, who we've uh, had on the show before, I believe, and who's got very good sources when it comes to Arsenal Football Club. So that is an interesting development this morning that Japan is supposed to be in for Arsene Wenger. He's getting a lot of um, headlines, Rory, isn't he? It's, it's He's still he's still the the superstar that oh, he is, yeah. everybody perceives him to be. There's no question about that. Like we were chatting about this on the show yesterday morning, that Gary Player uh, said, was saying that the kids would love to see Tiger Woods win this weekend, and the only one really who could give that kind of magical moment as a child watching the major this weekend is Rory McIlroy. Uh, in terms of kind of the wide-eyed moment of seeing a, a kind of a top-level uh, talent kind of outclassing the field and he's got one hell of a chance there at the moment he is on the second fairway as far as I can understand we will get over to Neil Tracy a little bit later on we'll also get the thoughts of Nathan Murphy of course later on in the show on the first day of the Open but just to finish off at the back pages uh, the Guardian goes with McElroy stays in open hunt after day of the underdog you've also got riding high Thomas wins again to stay on track for tour glory Barry Ryan coming up a little bit later on in the show to talk to us about his performance on Alpe d'Huez yesterday and the front page of the Daily Telegraph sports section is I'm no robot McElroy hits back at critic harm and vows to keep attacking Carnoustie after a battling display in opening round.